It's the start of another week, and with it, another opportunity to learn. Welcome to class time. Remember, you can use the various social media platforms for questions or comments. We ended last week with a look at measurement. We'll continue with that today with a focus on the volume of solids, specifically pyramids, cones, and spheres. I am Karima Mundell Thomas. And I am Latoya Shariah. The secret of getting ahead is getting started. So let's start. Let's start indeed. All right, so as you said, Karima, we'll be looking at calculating the volume of solids in particular, right? Pyramids, cones, and spheres. Yes. But we want to talk a little bit about volume and capacity. Yeah. I think we mentioned it in a previous lesson, but just to ensure that our students are on point with what we're going to be looking at. All right, so listen carefully. Now, the volume is the amount of space, right, that's taken up by a substance, whether it's solid or otherwise. All right, so a solid substance. It can be. Now, we talk about capacity as well being the measure of an object's ability. Ability, Latoya, to mm -hmm. hold a substance like solid, liquid, or gas. So basically, when we talk about capacity, we're thinking of something like a container. It has a, a cavity that can hold something. And there is a point when the volume and the capacity are actually equivalent. Mm -hmm. Because if I should fill a container to the brim, as we would say in Jamaica, mm -hmm. you know, we, it would have been filled to capacity, all right? So what I'm hearing you saying, Karima, is the capacity in Jamaican language is how much it can hold. All right. And then the volume is how much in there. All right. All we right. can work with that. All right. And we, we're saying it can be equal if it's full to the brim. Not a Both problem. can be equal. All right. So let's recap. Because though we're going to be looking at pyramids and um, cones, spheres and cones, right. it's important that we do a recap about volume of prisms. Which we would have done already. Yes. So let's just do a quick recap. So the volume of a prism, it's found by the area of its cross-section being multiplied by its perpendicular height or length. So here we have a rectangular prism, and I'm sure we can see the cross-section highlighted in yellow. Yes. So the area of that cross-section would be length, multiplied by width. And of course, we know now to find the volume, we must multiply by the perpendicular height. Now we also have a triangular prism. Also, the cross section is a triangle now in this case, and it's also in yellow. I think we love yellow today. <laughs> but um, to find the, vo the, the volume, again, we need to find the area of the cross section. So here the cross section is simply a triangle. So it's half the base multiplied by the perpendicular height. And I of want to the point triangle. Ah, you just took it from me. I wanted to point out that this perpendicular height is the perpendicular height of the triangle. Right. Once we have done that, we multiply by the perpendicular height of the prism. prism. There you go. <laughs> All right, so just a quick recap. Now, we also looked previously at the cylinder how to find the volume of a cylinder. And though we said the cylinder wasn't a prism, or it was, as you would put it, prism, prism cousin, cousin, right? We looked at it and we saw that it operated on the same premise. And so here we're seeing the cross section to be a circle or circular. Yes, so yes. it has a circular cross section. And so we can find its volume using pi multiplied by r square, which will give us the area of the circular portion multiplied by the perpendicular height. Okay. And again, it's the height of the cylinder in this case. <laughs> All right. So we're moving on to finding the volume of pyramids. So we know how to find the volume of prisms. Now we're moving on to pyramids. But what, what, are, what are pyramids? So I'm thinking back, and as I see the word pyramid, I think of Egypt. I like, think of the mummy. <laughs> immediately, immediately. But fun and joke aside, when I think about the pyramid, I think of a particular solid. So I know there's a base mm -hmm. and I'm thinking that, you know, there usually are triangular um, faces that actually meet at a point right up the top there. I mm -hmm. think it's called an apex, but I could be wrong. So you tell me because right. that so was a long time ago. 
A pyramid is a polyhedron that has a base and three or more triangular faces that meet at a point above the base, as you said, called an apex. I so here right. we have an image and this is a representation of a square base or rectangular based pyramid. And right at the little top at the peak there, that is our apex. I want to point out though, Latoya, before you move to the next point, when we looked at prism, we saw where the prism had a uniformed cross section. Right. Yes, so, so um, as we, we go to uh, the cube that we have on set, we would have seen that it has a uniformed cross section. So if I'm using here, we're seeing the same shape same size, same everything, right throughout right. The, the, the prism. However, when I look at the diagram that you have on the screen, and also when I take up my pyramid that I have here, mm -hmm. I'm seeing that, so in this case, the base is a square. Right. Yes? But I'm seeing that I'm not getting the same size square right throughout, because, because it's coming up to a point, these squares, uh, the, the square shape there, it's getting smaller, smaller. and smaller and smaller as it, until it gets to the top. Right. So that's a very important distinction between the prism Pyr and the pyramid. pyramids. Okay. We and all it's in the picture. Sorry to cut it. It's <laughs> actually right. the picture with the several colors actually showing, showing. us what's happening. Right. Mm -hmm. The shape of the base gives the pyramid its name. And in this case, as you also use the manipulative there, this is a square-based pyramid. Yes. Right? As you can see. Here right. are some other examples of pyramids. We have the rectangular-based pyramid, the triangular-based pyramid, or a tetrahedron. This is a special one, so it has a, its own name. Yes. Tetrahedron. And then hexagonal. Hex, hex, hexagonal based pyramid. <laughs> okay. okay, so, so as you, you are seeing that the, there is a, sh a different shape at the base and then we have the triangles going right, so up, our triangular, triangular faces, faces going up to meet at the apex. There you go. Perfect. All right. I have a scenario for you, for you Karima. All right. I love scenarios. So, two vendors, Miss Patsy and Miss Joan, are selling French fries at a school gate. And we, we students, you know the shrimps, yes. right? Both vendors use the same size scoop to serve a measure of French fries. All right. Miss Patsy twists her paper to make a cone for her chips. Nice and fancy. But Miss Joan twists her paper to make a cylinder for her chips or a cylindrical um, shape for her chips. Why do customers think that Miss Patsy is more generous? Kind of, I mean, well, um, like immediately as you're talking about Miss Patsy and Miss Joan, mm -hmm. I started to think about when I used to purchase ice cream. Mm -hmm. And I usually think, Boy, I prefer buy the ice cream on the cone, you know, I'm not lie. Because when it buy in the cup, it always look less. Just drop down in the yes, cup, so. Yes, yes. So I'm thinking that this might be something similar to what Miss... Patsy, Patsy? or Miss Joan. Yes, Miss Patsy, you know, the cone. Miss Patsy probably mm -hmm. used something like this for her yes, chips. Yes, yes. So me think the chips then are really drop down in the bottom too. That's why it looks like enough just, up on the top yeah, that because is, the space is smaller. Down here, so. The, okay, yeah, okay. That okay. is my opinion now, you know, but I could be wrong. All right, so when I, when I think about cylinders and cone, I'm wondering if they have a relationship. Hmm. Never thought of that before, you know, but <laughs> there may actually be a relationship. All right, so we're going to watch a video together. And then we're going to discuss to see if there's a relationship between the cone and the cylinder. All right, we can do that. So here we're seeing on screen a cylinder and we're also seeing a cone. Now we're seeing where the radius of the cylinder and the radius of the cone are the same. She would have um, just showed us. We also saw that the height of the cylinder is the same as the height of the cone. Now we're talking perpendicular height. Yes, right? please. Now she has filled the cone with water. She has poured one seal to the brim cone of water in the cylinder. And she's now pouring a second filled cone of water. And she's onto her third 
cone. So she's about to pour the third cone full of water into the cylinder. Let's see what's happening here. Wow, Latoya, it looked like the cylinder full. Hmm. Look to me like a relationship exists mm. because First of all, I noticed she checked right. if uh, the, the circular portion or the base of the cone mm -hmm. and the cross section of the cylinder, if they were the same in terms of area. And they were. And she also did a quick check to see if she had them aligned beside each other. So right. she saw that the perpendicular heights were the same. Yes. And we saw that it took three cone full of water to fill the cylinder. Hmm. So, so you are saying then that the, the capacity mm -hmm. of uh, the cone, well, three was the same as the one cylinder. The capacity of the one cylinder. Yes, the capacity. Yes, that's what I'm saying. So let's talk about the conditions that must persist for this to happen. Okay. So based on what you explained and what I saw on the video, then the capacity of a cylinder given that it is the same um the cross section is the same as the right. base of the cone and the heights are the same and the perpendicular heights are the same then so, the capacity of three cones will be the same capacity as one cylinder good but those oh. conditions must be met so let us just emphasize those okay. conditions a little bit more so when the perpendicular height of the cylinder and the cone are the same, right, condition one, as well as the area of the cross section of the cylinder and the area of the base of the cone are the same measures, then the capacity of the cylinder is three times the capacity of the cone. Exactly. So of a single cone, there you go. The capacity okay. of the cylinder is three times. There you go. So. Okay. But I want to know, because the focus of today's lesson is really not on the cylinder. Right. So how do I use this information to actually figure out how I can find the capacity or the volume, let's say it full, right. to capacity? How do I calculate? How do I figure out what is the volume or capacity of a goal? All right, let's start with what we know. All right. So we know that we can use, we can multiply pi um, pi multiplied by r squared. And Mul r here is the radius. Yes, mm -hmm. multiplied by the perpendicular height. We can find the volume of, of a, a cylinder. cylinder. Hmm. So then if three cones of the same perpendicular height and base, base mm -hmm. will get one cylinder, then I'm thinking that we can use one third yes. of the volume of the cylinder to determine the volume of the cone. True, come to think of it. Remember that one third really means that we're dividing this thing in three equal, equal parts. parts. Right. So really one of those thirds would actually be equivalent to what she poured from one cone. Right, right. Makes sense. So if we were to share the water that was in the cylinder in three equal parts, then that would be the volume for one cone, the volume of water for yeah, one, one cone. Yeah, one of those parts would be the volume yes. of... Yeah, makes sense. So let's, let's, let's continue. I'm, I'm loving this exploration. Let, let's, let's proceed a little All bit right. further. So now that when I think about the, the cone and the, the, the cylinder, cylinder, and I'm seeing the relationship there, I'm thinking about a rectangular-based pyramid and a cuboid. You think there's a relationship? I don't know. Let's watch this video and find out. I want to find out. I'm like so curious right now. So in this video, Latoya, we're seeing a rectangular based pyramid. It could be a square, but we're not so sure. So let's stick to rectangular based pyramid. And we're seeing a cuboid. Again, it could be a cube, but we're not sure. So let's stick to cuboid. Now, again, the area of the base and the area of the cross section are equivalent and the perpendicular heights were also equivalent. So we're seeing the pyramids being filled with some liquid. So he has poured in one pyramid in, two pyramids in, three full seal to the brim pyramids in and it's full. The prism is full. Now we're seeing a triangular prism and a triangular based pyramid. The base and the cross-section are the same, and the perpendicular heights 
is the same as well. And you notice he's checking all of that before he pours water into the pyramid. So it's full to the brim and he has now poured that into the triangular prism. He has filled a second pyramid and he has poured that too in the triangular prism. I need no full yet, Latoya. It's not yet full. This is a third pyramid he has filled and he has poured it in. I want to see if it's full. Oh yeah, there it is. It's full, Latoya, to the brim. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting indeed. Interesting. But that kind of sound. It, it, it looks similar to what we just saw, doesn't it? It did. Yeah. Well, it let's did. talk a little bit more about it. So based on the video, we saw mm -hmm. that the capacity of water that was in the rectangular-based prism. Or the cuboid. Or the cuboid, <laughs> yes. The cuboid. Mm -hmm. That was filled by filling three rectangular based pyramids yes. of the same perpendicular height mm -hmm. and the, air, the area of the base of the pyramid, pyramid and, and the, the area of the, the cross, cross section, section of the cuboid were the same. Yes, similar to what we saw before. Right, so, so, so basically when the perpendicular height of the cuboid and the rectangular based pyramid are the same as well as the area of the cross section of the cuboid and the area of the base of the rectangular base pyramid are the same measures. Yes, then something magical happens. The capacity of the cuboid is three times the capacity of the rectangular base pyramid. Ah. Wow. That's interesting. Yes. But you know where I'm going to go, right? No, where are you going? I already know how to find the volume of a cuboid. Okay. My purpose here today is for you to tell me how to find the volume of a pyramid. Well, we just see, we saw it just now. Yeah, but all I know is that it took three pyramids full of water mm -hmm. to fill a cuboid. So if it took three it to the fill the cuboid, dimensions. how would I find one? We know how to find the volume of a cuboid. Right, 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 right. I need to you know, find one third. Shear it up into three parts. Yes. Yes. Makes sense, makes sense. I, sh I should know this, you know, because so it's like so similar. So we can find the volume of a rectangular-based pyramid by finding one third of the volume of a similar cuboid by multiplying the length by the width and by the per multiply that by the perpendicular height. So area of the cross-section multiplied by the perpendicular height. Yeah, and then we just find one third of that. Find one third of it. Makes sense. So you see, <laughs> I don't think we had actually talked back about Miss Patsy, you know. We didn't actually conclude why the students felt that way, but I think we can mention it now that when Miss Patsy, I hope it's the Miss Patsy, but you know, the one that did the, the cylindrical mm -hmm. container, when she put fair fries in there, it only went to one third the height of, of the, the cylinder. That is why. And then the other one who used the cone, fair one looked for One third older. of the capacity. Yes, yes. The yes, capacity, yes, thank you. Yes, yes. that is yeah. why. Yeah, we, but we it's definitely the same, had to go back to that. But you it's know. the same um, scoop. scoop. There you go, same scoop. All right. <laughs> but the children don't know that, you know. So. All right. We also saw in the video yes. where the relationship between the triangular based pyramid and the triangular prism were well the relationship seen. was explored yes yeah. we, we did see a relationship and just like the cylinder and the cube and the cuboid the cylinder and the cone the cylinder and the cone <laughs> and the cuboid and the rectangular based pyramid yes. the relationship is the same with the triangular based pyramid and the triangular prism but we have to remember these very important conditions. Definitely. So, when the perpendicular height of the triangular prism and the triangular base pyramid are the same, that's one condition. Condition two, the area of the cross-section of the triangular prism and the area of the base of the triangular base pyramid are the same measures, then the capacity of the triangular prism is three times the capacity of the triangular-based pyramid. 
Hmm. And we can use that information to help us determine the volume or the capacity of a triangular-based pyramid. pyramid. So we know how to find the volume of a triangular prism. And since the volume of a triangular-based pyramid, with, the, with those conditions applied, yes. then we would find one-third of an assumed similar tri triangular prism of the volume of that triangular prism, as so, you can see on screen. And I want to point out again that I don't want students to be confused when they're seeing perpendicular height mm -hmm. being written twice. It's not yes. referring to the same dimension. Remember no. the section that's in brackets as we look back on the screen. Yes. Remember when we're talking about the, the triangle, the triangle would have had a height in and of yes. itself, yes. a perpendicular yes. height. And so we want to ensure that our students are not confused when yes. they're looking at what we have on screen. So half the base multiplied by the perpendicular height, we're referring to the base of the triangle right and we're referring to the perpendicular height of the triangle and that would now give us the, of the pyramid area no Prism. i'm talking about what's inside the oh, bracket oh, okay, now okay, okay. so we're talking about half base multiplied by perpendicular height okay that deals only with the triangle the shape the triangular portion area of, of the cross section the cross section beautiful Great. and notice that when we have on the outside now of that bracket, we have another perpendicular height to consider. And we have put it in red for a reason. Yes. Because this perpendicular height is referring to the height of the prism. Or when we're looking at the triangular base pyramid, yes. it would be referring to the height of the pyramid. pyramid. And we're talking perpendicular height. So I want to just go back to what we have on our table just to... Uh, review because I think when we come back from the break we're going to be looking at some questions yes. and I would want us to just summarize what it is that we have looked at so far. So we have found some interesting relationships right? so far. We, unfortunately we don't have a triangular uh, prism or a triangular based pyramid but we found out something today students. We found out something today. We found out that if we wanted to find the capacity of this square-based pyramid, yes, and we, we compared, as a matter of fact, the capacity of this square-based pyramid to this cube, in this case, and we found that once the base of the pyramid is the same as the cross-section of the prism yes. and also if we were to put them let me get ensure the camera is picking up if we were to put them beside each other these might not be exact at the moment but it's man-made but we're getting the idea if we were to put them beside each other and actually check the perpendicular heights if we find that they are equal yes then the capacity of the cone not the cone, the square-based pyramid yes. is actually one-third the capacity of the cube. Yes. Am I correct? Did I say that Very correctly? Very correct. Beautiful. So, so you know what I love about this, Karima? We don't need to try and remember all these different formulas. <laughs> If we can remember the relationship, we don't need to study the formula. Yes, and I'm not one for swatting, yes, you know. Yes, yes. I really can't do it. Yes. So we also found a similar relationship between the cone and the cylinder. When yes. we're talking about the volume or the capacity. And we saw that once the cross-section and the base of this are the same, and their perpendicular heights were also the same, we noticed that the volume of the cone is, one is actually third. one third the volume of the cylinder. I think it's a good time to take a break. I think so. <laughs> yes.
Let's talk volume. TVJ reaches more than a million people over the age of 10 during the course of a day. TV talks to your audience. Hello? Let's talk TV. Call the TVJ sales department at 876-926-1100 or visit televisionjamaica.com. COVID-19 is still here. And so, if you have underlying medical conditions or you're at an increased risk of severe illnesses, a word to the wise is sufficient. Continue to practice all health and safety guidelines or if you are 65 years and over, you might want to continue to stay inside. Your health, your responsibility. Inside, 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 inside. Welcome back to Class Time, CSEC Math. We've been looking at the volume of solids, which is a continuation of our measurement series. So let's continue. All right, Karima. So right before we went to the break, we established the relationship between some very nice prisms and... Uh, pyramids. Pyramids and cone. And cylinder. <laughs> and cylinder. Right. So we're going to be using that information now to see if we can answer some questions. Yeah, just in case somebody just joining us, mm -hmm. we just want them to remember that uh, whether it be the cone and the cylinder, right. or it's the pyramid and uh, prism, yes. we want to check certain things. So we need to ensure that the cross section of the prism and the base of the pyramid are the are same. The same. Mm -hmm. And we also want to ensure that the perpendicular heights are the same. Yes. Then we can see a relationship yes. that the cone or pyramid, depending yes. on which one, is one, one third. third. The volume of that is one third of its that. corresponding prism. Can I say corresponding? Or cylinder. <laughs> <laughs> prism or cylinder. Yes. So we're going to use that up. Just in case you're just joining us, I'm sure these questions will help you. All right. So the paper cups used at a water cooler is in the shape of a cone hmm. of radius three centimeters and height 10 centimeters. Calculate the volume of water in the cup when it is full, and we're taking pi as 3.14 or 3 and 14 tenths, hundredths. What do you know? I actually have one of those cups right here. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So we've been given the radius, correct? Yes, we were. Three centimeters? Yes. And the height of 10 centimeters. Yes. All right, let's see what we have here. So we need to determine the volume of the water cup. So the cup is in the shape of a... Cone. A cone. And we know that we can find the volume of a cone by multiplying one third, by, multiplied by pi, multiplied by... Radius square. squared multiplied by its perpendicular height. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> All right. All right. So from here, it's pretty much substituting because we yes. know we're given what to use for pi, 3.14 yes. or 14 hundredths, as you pointed out. We have the radius of 3 centimeters and we know the perpendicular height is 10 centimeters. And remember, it's radius squared. The radius yes. is squared. Yes. Make sure, students, that you pay attention to that. All right. So once we calculate um, 94 and 2 tenths yes. or 0.2 yes. cubic centimeters. And I just want to point out as well that all we did were to, was to assume that the cone had a similar relationship with a cylinder. 
Well, we're not assuming. We're saying if we had a cylinder yes. that had the same circular portion in yes. terms of the area yes. and the perpendicular height were the same, then we're sure that this relationship exists. One third of the volume of that cylinder there you go. would be the volume of this water cup here. All right. So we can basically proceed with another question. Okay. So a cereal company is changing the package of their mini cereal package. You know, the little small... Yeah, man, the one, one you can just drop in your lunch bag. Yes. yes, man. They are trying to decide which of two packages will hold more cereal. Determine which of the two packages will hold more. Hmm. So we have a square-based pyramid for package A look. All and right. then we have a triangular-based pyramid for package B look. Hmm. And we need to determine which will hold more. Okay, let's, let's, let's do a bit. Which one you think going hold more? You want me to choose first? You sure? I, well, okay, I choose the square. I think the square base pyramid going hold more. I know you were gonna choose that, you know. That's <laughs> why I make sure to ask you. So since you've chosen package A, I'll choose package B. Don't worry, All right. no sweat. So we will look at the capacity of each package, and then we will see. So All right. here we have a square base pyramid, and we need to find the capacity. All right, and since we're assuming that the cereal that's gonna be in there will be full to capacity, Yes, yes. We, we have actually used the word volume here. Yes. All right, so the volume of the square-based pyramid is going to be one-third, whatever the area of the base is, multiplied by its perpendicular height. All right. All right, so it's a square-based pyramid, and so we know that the base is a square, so obviously both length and width are equivalent or equal. So we have substituted our five centimeters there, and also our eight centimeters for the perpendicular height. Yes. And then it's simplification. All right. So 66 and 7 tenths cubic centimeters. Hmm. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So hmm. you say you're... You try to memorize that number. All right. Okay? No problem. Okay. So I, I'm 66 and 7 tenths. All right. Okay. Let's cubic see. centimeters. Let, let's talk about my my <laughs> package package b the triangular based pyramid mm -hmm. so i'm looking at the triangular based pyramid the, the diagram there mm -hmm. and i'm noticing that on the triangle we have a base of five centimeters mm -hmm. and a perpendicular height on the triangle that is remember of eight centimeters mm -hmm. and i'm also seeing a perpendicular height of 10 centimeters as it relates to the pyramid itself yes all right so the volume of the triangular base pyramid, again, one third, the area of its base multiplied by its perpendicular height. And again, we can substitute. So notice we have kept a portion in bracket. We're just following through from the relationship that we discovered. All yes. right. So it's not that you have to multiply in that particular order, but based on what we have been discussing, yes. we have chosen to do it this way. So it's half multiplied by five centimeters multiplied by eight centimeters multiplied by 10 centimeters and then we're finding one third of that result so one third of 200 cubic centimeters <laughs> this is very funny because that looks like what you had for your package really i like, thought seriously? i was going to win mm. all right but, so basically then both packages will hold the same amount even though they are two different solids yeah but you see that's the beautiful thing about measurement because we notice now that yes. when we looked at the the square based pyramid the the dimensions weren't necessarily weren't let me not even say necessarily they weren't the same right. as the dimensions that we have on this uh, triangular based pyramid right but when we actually completed the calculations we noticed that both packages will actually hold the same amount of cereal this is interesting this is like math this. it's beautiful yeah and i don't have to part with anything because <laughs> you didn't win the bet so <laughs> So let us, let us continue with, with our lesson because when we looked at the objectives at all, we said we were going to be looking mm -hmm. at the volume of pyramids, pyramids cones, cones and, and spheres. We did pyramids. Yeah. Did cone. Now we're on to the sphere. sphere. Okay. And I'm thinking since that we started on a trajectory of finding relationships, 
Mm -hmm. I'm now looking at the sphere on the table and I'm trying to figure out which other solid could I find a relationship with. Hmm. Well, guess what? How we sectionalized the, the solids on the table uh -huh. has something to do with which ones are related. So let me remove my, my paper one that I just used. How okay. those are on the table, they're actually sorted, so to speak. All right, so from that clue... I'm going to, hmm, I'm going to s s choose the cone and the sphere. So you think this cone is related to the sphere in some I way? I think so. All right, as usual. But then if the cone is related to the sphere, that means that the sphere is related to the cylinder because the cone is related to the cylinder. But hold on, hold on. One, one step at a time, darling. Uh, Let us figure out, first of all, if there is a relationship okay. between the cone all right. and, and the sphere. So what, uh, what, basic, what I saw you did earlier in finding relationships, I saw you line them up. All right. Like so. Okay. The sphere is not going to stay because it, it's spherical, round. Okay. So it kind of seems like the heights are the same. Mm -hmm. All right. Seem as if the area of this half circle and the... So yeah, they're basically yeah, looking like they have the same radius. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. You know what? That's why I think we need to watch a video. As we've been doing. That is true. I'm not going, not going to rely on my own knowledge. Oh, yes. And we don't have anything to measure really <laughs> right true. here. And, you know, it would be good right. to have some liquid to see what's right. happening. So we're going to watch a video together and then... So we're seeing in this video, Latoya, notice um, your sphere couldn't stand on its own, you remember? Right. <laughs> so he has actually propped it up on a, on a prism. No need to pay attention to that. And he would have done the same checks that you did. So the height of the, the cone here is equivalent to the diameter of the sphere. Mm -hmm. And the, the radius of the base of the cone is equivalent to the radius of the sphere. Now, he has filled the cone... No, but the cone, being its circular nature, it's hard to pour from, not true? Yes. So he has basically just transferred the water into a pyramid just to make it easy to chew it out, you know? Mm -hmm. The little corner part, you know? So he's now filling a second cone. Hmm. So one full cone was already thrown in. Yes. And now a second cone is being thrown in. Cone of water, right? Water. Karima, it's full. It's full. Oh, my God. It is filled <laughs> to the brim. Yep, wow. it is. Uh, you know, every time I see these things, uh, my love for math just, you know, <laughs> it, it, it skyrockets, you know. But let's, let's talk about what we saw in the video, though. What kind of relationship did okay. we see coming out? So we, at the height of the cone and the height, or we can say the diameter, of the sphere. sphere were the same. Yes. And the radius of the, the By base nature of the, of the fact that the diameter are the same, then the radius will be also be the same. All right, so the radius of the, 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 the base of the cone, right, right is right, equivalent the to the radius portion. of the sphere. And then the volume of water in two, from two cones... Full to the brim. Full to the brim. Full up the sphere. Full up the sphere. You know what? We have prepared something just to explain how we need to now derive how we form, what formula can we use. We right, have to derive right. from what we saw. Okay. So let's go back to the screen and see if we can watch carefully what's happening on this slide. So we're summarizing. Okay. So walk us through, just click quickly and let's see what's happening here. So first we have two cones and we have a sphere, representation of a sphere. All right. So we're going to do some checks now because remember we saw some conditions coming out in the video. All so right. So let's do our first check. So we have the radius of the base of the cone and they're both the same. And it's check. matching with the radius of the sphere. Check. Check. All right. All right. And we also know that to find the volume of one cone, yes, that would be one third, um, taking the area of its base multiplied by its perpendicular height, represented by pi multiplied by r squared multiplied by its perpendicular height there. 
So the, we are now representing the base of the two cones. The volume of the two the cones. The volume of the two <laughs> cones. Thank you very much. Yes. The volume of the two cones. And we saw that when those were put together, mm -hmm. as we saw in the video, he poured from two cones into the sphere. Yes. So we can say then that the volume of these two cones yes. was actually equivalent to the sphere. All right. And we checked the radius a while ago. Okay. So let's check a few other things. The so let's check the height of the cone. Same as cone number two. Yes. Also the same, same as, as the, the diameter hey. of the sphere. Hey. Yes. Okay. So then, what do we know about diameter? Hmm. That, that's two radii. Ah. Watch this. <laughs> Just look, girl. Oh. I mean, this is so exciting. Okay. So, so we say, yes, radius number one, radius number two. So we have two radii. So let's tell you. Look back at what you have below each of those cones, right? And so, tell me if I think I could swap out. I don't know if that's the right word, you know, but we're Jamaican. We replace. Understand. Replace. Substitute. Substitute. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the height that we have here, I replace it with two red eye. Because the that, length. this now means that the height of the cone is, is equivalent, equivalent to two times or two of the length of the radius. That is ah. true. So we are replacing ah. from in our formula for the, the volume of a cone, we're replacing the perpendicular height with yes. two R. Two R. So we are now representing H as two R. So we can simplify what's happening up there because we had R square initially and now yes. we have two R there. So we can put it together nicely now. Right, because so we we're multiplying. We're multiplying. Yes. Beautiful. So we have two multiplied by pi. Oopsie, it's gone, right? No, so it's right. Oh, you're, you're going through going again. Going back, right. <laughs> so right. Just, just want to show, just in case you missed it, that we, we realize that there is a relationship between the height of the cone and the height. And the, the diameter, diameter of the sphere. Of the sphere, which is now two radii. Right. So we're replacing that perpendicular height with two R representing the two radii. And now we're going Multiply to... Multiply and simplify what's, right. what's in our numerator. So we don't have to have all this confusion. We, uh, we have R's, so we can group the like terms. So we're multiplying throughout, right? Yes. And so we have a simplified numerator here, Latoya. Yes. 2 pi multiplied by r cube. And it's one third of that. Okay. And um, we have, we remember that it took two full cones. Yes. To fill up the sphere. So right. we need to put that together. And one of the beautiful things, it looks fraction in, not true? Yeah, man. So we have two numerator, fraction. we have denominator. Yes. And we notice our, we're noticing our denominators are, are the, the same. same. Beautiful thing about fractions now, we can just add our numerators. numerators. So let's add. Hmm. Hmm. I tell you, this is, so, <laughs> this is so exciting. So basically, Latoya, what we've just discovered is that to find the volume of a sphere, it is really 4 third pi r cubed. Interesting. Interesting indeed. You know, I'm, I can't wait to use up this information. So guess what? Let's put a question up on the screen. Let's All read right. it. And we're asking our students to do this one in the break. So take a screenshot, something. Yeah, man. Quickly, sure a pastry it. company makes spherical chocolate balls. The diameter of each ball is three centimeters. How many chocolate balls can be made from 710 Cubic centimeters of melted chocolate. Oh, I need that in my life. I need it. And we're taking pi as 3.14. All right. So let's pause right here. Time for another quick break. Class time continues after these messages.
Welcome back to CSEC Math. Let's pick up where we left off. We did leave you with a question. Yes, we did. And we we're wondering what you did in the break. <laughs> okay? All right, so we're going to work through the question. And if you get it correct, pat yourself on the shoulder. That's right. So. All right? So it said, a pastry company makes spherical chocolate balls. The diameter of each ball is three centimeters. How many chocolate balls can be made from 710 cubic centimeters of melted chocolate? And we're told to take pi as 3.14. Yes. Now, before the break, Latoya, we found out a, a quick way. We discovered yes. yeah, how to find the volume of a sphere. Right. And this, we're talking about spherical chocolate balls. Yes. All right. So I think we, nice need, to, and round. Yeah, we need to use up that formula that we just derived right. to assist us here with this question. So, but what's the first thing we need to do though? Because they're asking us how many chocolate balls can they make from 710 cubic centimeters oh. of melted chocolate? But we don't know. So we need to first find how much melted chocolate they need for one, for one ball. Okay. Yeah, okay. we need to do that. And All I'm right. noticing something else lots because it says diameter of each ball is three centimeters. Mm -hmm. and Bring up, bring, bring up what we just discovered, please. Volume of a sphere is equivalent to four third pi r cube. Don't see any d in there. Don't see any diameter. So we need the radius, girl. Yes, but, but that's, that's easy. Man. Yeah, I was about to say that half easy of the diameter, to. half the length of the diameter. But that's a very good observation yes. because that is one of the common. errors, very common errors that our students make, where they just take the values from the question, insert them into the formula without operating on them. Sometimes you have to up, do a little small procedure. Yes. Yes. To get so, to your so correct So our answer. radius is uh, one and a half or one point. Five. Yes. All right. And we're just substituting our values. All, they already told us what to use for pi, which is right. three point one four, and we're multiplying that by r cubed, and or r is half of the diameter as told, which is one point five. Simplifying, so we're now finding multiplying four thirds by oh, ten point six, and so the Volume, volume of chocolate, of chocolate. <laughs> that is needed to make one chocolate ball would be 14 and 13 hundredths or, or 14.13 14 cubic, cubic centimeters of right. chocolate ball. Hmm. That so must sound enough. I, we need to figure out when I finish, we need oh. to figure out how many of these chocolate balls can be made okay. from 710 cubic centimeters. So let's see if we can get there quickly. All right. So we know that it takes 14.13 cubic centimeters to make one chocolate ball. Yes. So if I have 710 cubic centimeters of melted chocolate and I want to know how many... Chocolate balls, can I get out of that? I need to see how many 14.13 I can get out of 700. Simple thing, man. Yeah, I need to divide. Yeah. Beautiful. So how All many right. chocolates? So when we divide 710 by 14.13, we're getting a value of 50.25. But they ask us how many chocolate balls. I don't think they're going to sell quarter chocolate balls. Who is going to buy that? <laughs> So, so let's I. just let us give this approximation. So pretty much 710 cubic centimeters of melted chocolate will actually or can actually make 50 chocolate balls. All right. I think Sounds we're ready good. to summarize. We have done a lot today. A lot. Yes. But I love the exploration. <laughs> it was fun. Me too. Me yeah. too. So, okay. So based on all that we would have explored. Yes. What can we deduce, summarize, generalize. The thing that we want our students yes. to remember after today. Huh? Now the volume of a cone is equal to one third the volume of the cylinder with the same perpendicular height and the same radius. So we remember those conditions. I have to. So the perpendicular heights must be equal and we, we mentioned the radius of the cylinder and the radius of the base of the cone yes. must be equal as well. All right. All right. We would have discovered before volume of a cylinder is pi r is found using um, the formula pi multiplied by r square multiplied by perpendicular height. Or multiplying the area of its cross section, cross -section by, by its perpendicular, perpendicular height. height. So therefore for the cone, mm -hmm. if we're saying it's one third, 
then it's pretty much one third multiplied by pi multiplied by r squared multiplied by perpendicular heights. In other words, sing stress. One third, <laughs> one third the area of the base multiplied by its perpendicular height. Yes. All right, so let's see what else we discovered quickly. All right. Now, we also discovered, Latoya, that the volume of a pyramid is equal to one-third the volume of the prism with the same perpendicular height and the same cross-section or base. So we know cross-section, mm -hmm. we're talking about the prism. Yes. Base, we're talking about the pyramid. Yes. And I think that picture says a lot, right? So it's a similar relationship that we found earlier. So the volume of a pyramid is equal to one-third the area of its base multiplied by its perpendicular height. And I made one last discovery. You no, want to say but something before? Yes. Go remember ahead. when we're looking at the triangular pyramid and the triangular Prism. tri prisms, we have two perpendicular heights to take into consideration. Right. And we have to distinguish the perpendicular height of the triangle, the cross section and the base separate from the perpendicular height of the solid, solid itself. itself. Beautiful. Right. And lastly, yes. the volume of a sphere is equal to the volume of two cones whose diameter and perpendicular height are equal to the diameter of the sphere. Yes. All right, and we would have explored that yes, earlier. Yes, So the volume of the sphere is four-third pi r cube. Whew. What a time. A wonderful time indeed. But you know what? <laughs> this good thing has come to an end. <laughs> That's all the time we have for today. Aww. But you know, you can watch a repeat of this lesson on JNN at 5 p.m. And for 24-hour learning, there is the School Time channel on One Spot Media. Well, our measurement series continues tomorrow with distance, time, and speed. If you're away from your TV, though, you can watch the lesson in real time on Television Jamaica's YouTube channel or on One Spot Media. Remember to always do your best. What you plant now, you will definitely harvest later. So until tomorrow, Karima, be, be good, good, be, be safe. safe, sanitize, wash your hands, wear, wear your mask. <laughs>